Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, polls closed in Tanzania's elections following campaigns marred by alleged intimidation of impo opponents to President John Magafuli and reports of deadly violence and internet shutdowns this week. Also, we head to Ivory Coast ahead of this weekend's election where the opposition is hoping to unseat the incumbent Alassane Ouattara, who's controversially running for a third term. And an, in an exclusive interview, the, detain the daughter of detained Rwandan, Paul Rusesa Bagina, says that she believes that the international community is overlooking the shady circumstances in which her father ended up in handcuffs in Kigali at the end of August after having left his home in the US for a trip to Dubai. But first, polls closed in Tanzania's elections on Wednesday following campaigns marred by alleged intimidation of opponents to President John Magafuli and reports of deadly violence and internet shutdowns this week. The leading opposition candidate, Tundu Lisu of the Chidema party, has said that the polls saw widespread irregularities. Magafuli is accused of having grown increasingly authoritarian over the last five years. He's running for a second term. Results are expected within a week. Mukelwa Shachwayu joins us now with more. Mukelwa, now there were a lot of tensions going into Wednesday's vote. How did the day pan out? Well, internet users, users in Tanzania started reporting internet disruptions from last night. Social media platforms such as WhatsApp and Twitter uh, were being throttled, and this is according to reports on the ground. France 24 has been leaked documents from the government of Tanzania ordering internet service providers to install hardware on their networks in order to enable the government uh, to block certain parts of the internet. Uh, mobile phone providers were given a directive uh, to block bulk messaging and voice capabilities. Uh, rights groups have re expressed concerns about this, saying that the blocking of the internet could lead to unrest and is a clear violation of people's rights. Now, now, claims of fraud uh, have been circulating uh, for a while now, mainly uh, from the opposition uh, directed towards supporters of um, uh, President Magafuli. Were there any reports of irregularities on Wednesday? The opposition complained that some of its party agents were barred from entering polling stations to monitor the elections. The main opposition leader, uh, Tundulisu, said that this was an onslaught on democracy and civil uh, liberties. The Tanzania Elections Watch, who have been monitoring the polls, said that some of their researchers found that some polling stations didn't have pres enough presidential ballot papers. This means that some people were forced to vote only for MPs and their councillors. Uh, some in the opposition have said that there's been widespread rigging. They say, um, however, they've previously said that they will not accept uh, a, a stolen election. Uh, rights groups have said that the period leading up to these elections have been characterised by violence, intimidation and a clamping down on the media. And they say that these irregularities uh, could lead to um, the situation where uh, the, the tense of this situation is more volatile. Does the opposition have much of a shot at unseating Magafuli? Well, exit polls in Tanzania are banned. However, many believe that uh, President John Magafuli will be announced the winner. However, this is within a context where the opposition has complained that they have not been able to campaign freely. They've also uh, been suspicious of widespread irregularities. So uh, should uh, uh, President John Magafuli be announced the winner, many opposition supporters will not have confidence in the results. Uh, however, once the election electoral body uh, announces the results. There is no legal recourse to dispute them. Thanks very much. Mikhail Wachachwai there for us, uh, reporting from Kenya as foreign media weren't allowed into the country to cover the election. Now, the ICC's chief prosecutor has said that she's worried about reports of rising pre-electoral violence 
In Ivory Coast, at least 30 people have been killed in clashes since August, ahead of Saturday's vote. Fatou Bensouda has warned that anyone linked to political violence would face the courts. Now, 3,000 were killed in conflict that followed elections in late 2010. In August, President Alassane Ouattara is controversially running for a third term this time around. Pascal Afengesa has risen as a leading figure in the fractured opposition FBI party. Our correspondents sent us this report. Few were surprised that back in August, the FPI, founded by Laurent Gbagbo, chose Pascal Afi Gesson as their candidate. Au nom de l'intérêt national, qui exige aujourd'hui qu'on mette fin à la gouvernance du RHDP, il faut que on se retrouve. Il faut qu'on s'unisse. Three months later, any hopes he had of uniting his bitterly divided party to defeat President Ouattara's RHDP looked like wishful thinking. The FBI is still divided between the Bagbo or Nothing wing and the side of the party led by Afi Gesson. But his decision to boycott the election campaign has helped him to bury the hatchet, at least to some degree. The different process that he has made the object, notably his collusion with President Ouattara, the fact that he is presented as a traitor of the party, all these etiquettes are now being retired au regard de la position que le président Afonguesan adopte dans ce bras de fer. Pascal Avigesson has even become the spokesperson of the coalition of opposition parties led by Henri Conan Bédier against Ouattara's bid for a third term. C'est le combat pour l'avenir de notre pays. Parce que la dictature à laquelle Alassane Ouattara nous soumet nous hypothèque toute possibilité d'émancipation. Known as a man of compromise, the former Prime Minister to Laurent Gbagbo has promised this time around to fight Ouattara tooth and nail to the very end. Nous sommes surpris de l'entêtement avec lequel il veut faire ce passage en force, mais nous ne connaîtrons pas un tel président. The tense standoff between the opposition and the president hints at trouble to come following the election. Well, Nigeria's army has admitted that its soldiers were at the Leki Toll Plaza in Lagos, where at least 10 protesters were killed earlier this month. The military had previously denied that troops were at the site. Its spokesman still denies that witness, witness allegations that soldiers shot the peaceful demonstrators. The country saw weeks of rallies against police brutality this month in one of its biggest social movements in decades. Now, at the end of August, Paul Rusesa Bagina, the man portrayed as a hero in the movie Hotel Rwanda, appeared in handcuffs in Rwanda, despite having long lived in the U.S. and having vowed not to return to his homeland. The Belgian citizen denies the terror charges that he faces. He went missing during a trip to Dubai. Rwanda's denied that there was anything illegal about the circumstances of his detention. Rusesa Bagina was arrested in Rwanda passion to a valid arrest warrant. The question of illegal detention has never been raised in court during the pretrial detention process. Well, Rusesa Wagina's daughter disagrees. In an exclusive interview with France 24, she said that she believes that her father is the victim of a political vendetta and that she fears for his safety. Hello, Karine Kanimba. Hello. Thank you for welcoming me on the show. So your father, Paul Roussessa Bagina, has been detained uh, in Rwanda since the end of August. Where does uh, his case stand at the moment? He's being illegally detained in Rwanda. There is absolutely nothing legal about his current presence in Rwanda. He was kidnapped. He was in Dubai, traveling to Dubai. He was supposed to return to the United States on the 1st or 2nd of September. Um, he was then taken forcefully to Rwanda in the first few days. We had absolutely no contact with him. We wrote to him, but the messages weren't delivered. He described himself that his hands were tied, his legs were tied, that he was blindfolded, he was in a place that he did not, he did not know. Um, and actually, we found out as well that throughout those days, he wasn't given his medication. He was probably not eating either. You've been speaking to him recently on the phone. How is he doing? He's not doing well. Um, we spoke with him um, for the first time after 13, uh, 12 or 13 days on Friday, and he told us that like he was not doing well. So, so clearly, there's no pretense of fair trial if he feels that way. 
why are you worried that your father won't be treated fairly by the Rwandan justice system? From the case of my father, is first of all, Paul Kagame has a personal vendetta against him. All those allegations or allegations he's been trying to, to pin onto him for over 15 years. Um, my father is not being treated fairly. He's not been given like access to his lawyers because they know that the fake allegations that they've been trying to, to pin onto him for all those years are fake and that they wouldn't hold in front of an independent judge. Why has it been so difficult to speak to your father on a regular basis? Because they're trying to, to control the amount of information he has. They're telling, what it, we, we don't know what they're telling him, we don't know what they're doing to him, but they're also trying to stop him from um, defending, from creating a real defense for himself. They're trying to limit the communication that we have with him so that, um, so that he's unable to not only tell us what they're doing to him. Every single time we talk to, to my father, it sounds like he's reciting a text being given to him by someone. It sounds like they're standing right over him. Your dad is a Belgian citizen and he's a US resident. Have you received uh, much support from either government in trying to deal with your dad's case? It is their Belgian responsibility to go and get their, their citizen that was kidnapped and taken forcefully to a country that he had vowed that he would never go back to. However, thus far, the Belgian government has not made a, a position on the kidnapping, which is very worrying to us. The Americans have been a lot more kind to, kinder to us and more helpful, as a matter of fact. My father is um, a Belgian citizen and not a U.S. A citizen, and so it, it is the Belgians' responsibilities to go, to go get him, and, and, uh, and thus far we have seen very little efforts coming from the Belgians. Has there been much uh, attention or international investigation on the circumstances of how your dad ended up in Rwandan custody? The very sad thing is that um, there are many people like who have gone in this situation. But now we're lucky that, that because of his international platform, people are paying attention. And so we hope that this will not only bring justice to him, but justice to all these other people who have been forcefully disappeared and, and, uh, and killed by this regime. And that interview conducted there by Alex Le Bourdon in Brussels. That is, though, all we have time for on Eye on Africa today. Thanks for joining us and do so again if you can. Take care.